Okay, guys, the Slender Fox is back. Um, I am going to be, uh, let me just adjust this real quick. Because I am already doing Chapter 2. I'm working on it. Anyway, I'm just going to start freaking reading uh, Chapter 1 of Dash and Sketch Meet um, the Creepy Pasta Game. You know? The, anyway. So, while I'm reading, you could just stare at this picture of Tiggy Toby, because, I don't know, I have nothing else better to, dr better, you know, just pitch black is kind of boring, and I, if you just like to stare at a screen non-stop at one picture for, like, ever, here you go, anyway, so, uh, I'm just gonna start reading, and, um, I hope you guys are enjoying what I wrote. I enjoyed writing it because writing is not my favorite thing, especially if I'm forced to do, but if it's something I want to do, it's more fun. Um, so, um, I'm just going to start reading chapter one. Here we go. Anyway, it's been a month since Sketch and Dash became BFFEs, Best Friends for Eternity, Midnight was only minutes away, as as Dash and Sketch got ready for their nightly hunt. Sketch brought her demon pencil and sketchbook, while Dash carried her uh, machete. Suddenly, Sketch's dog, Soul Eater, burst through the door, burst through into the into her room. In his mouth, her knife. Sketch hardly ever uses her knife, but for it was really just for emergency purposes only. Ender, her cat, strode in after Soul, barely putting any effort in keeping up with the crazy hyena husky demon. With his rather long, slim body, Ender resembled that of an Enderman. His bright purple eyes, nose, mouth, and even the insides of his ears and whiskers seemed to glow in the dim light. Thank you, Soul. Now, what time is it, Dash? Sketch shouted to her friend. Only three more minutes before we go, she answered. Dash was downstairs at the old building, sharpening her weapon. Her long black hair was tied in a somewhat messy ponytail, but it still looked nice. She had a t-shirt that had a wide collar so that her right shoulder was visible. On to also, the T was cut short so you could see her belly. She had a pretty skirt with a belt onto it in place, um, and some combat boots to match the pretty knee-length skirt. Sketch, on the other hand, wore a black, purple, and blue hoodie. Her hoodie also included pockets at the top, uh, at the top for her feline ears. She wore red jeans and black, purple, red, and blue shoes. She had glowing yellow eyes and shark like teeth. She even had a zippered she even had zippered cheeks so that she can unzip them and open her mouth wide enough for her to wrap around a sumo wrestler's throat. She wore gloves that were the same combination of colors as her shoes. The building they lived in was an extremely old abandoned hotel building, about three stories high and most definitely haunted with spirits, to keep them company, of course. Though there was one ghost who went by the name of Rosie Hawkins. She appeared to be about six years old, but she was the sweetest, kindest, most adorable killer ghost you could ever meet. Dash and Sketch considered her an eternal sister. Dash even made a stuffed kitty na she named Stitchy, but Stitchy soon earned a spirit of a little boy whose name was sadly forgotten. So Stitchy was now a living kitty doll to keep Rosie company. When Rosie and Stitchy go out to hunt with Dash and Sketch, Stitchy would play doll while Rosie would put an old bag over her face. The bag was covered in her own blood, and eye holes were cut out in them. An X spread into a smile where her mouth should be. 
All you could see on that pretty little face was her eyeless and still bleeding socket. She wore a red sleeveless dress that went down past her knees, and on her chest was a circle with an X through it. The mark had drizzle markings on it as if she had blood there, but she was still cute. No one ever dared enter or go near their house because of all the disappearances of people who've gotten in there. Just their luck. Time skip. After the hunt, Sketch, Dash, Rosie, Stitchy, Ender, and Soul were all satisfied, covered in crimson from head to toe, wearing and weapons, teeth, and hands sticky with blood. Then Rosie began to complain. Dash, I want a bash, she pouted and stared at her with her adorable puppy eyes. Something that even the most cruel thing couldn't resist. Okay, Rosie, Dash giggled and knelt, by, knelt down eye level with the small six-year-old and patted her soft, honey-blonde hair. Yay, she squealed as she grabbed Dash's hand and literally dragged her over to the bathroom for a bath. Stitchy just followed swiftly behind, saying, Help clean me, too, in his little seven-year-old voice. <sighs> Guess I have to make the make dinner, then. Ugh, gr Sketch groaned as she flopped on her bed. She changed into her PJs and walked downstairs to prepare their food. She wasn't very good, but good enough t not to burn anything severely. She suddenly stopped and perked her ears up. Her eyes widened as she heard it again, a shuffling noise down the stairs, along with some giggling. The hell? Sketch murmured. No one ever comes here. Like, at all. Not even to see it? Who in the right mind would come here? All right, that's it, she whispered to herself. She climbed up onto the wall and to the ceiling. Like a snake, she crawled over to the living room. There, in the middle of the room, was a man around his early twenties, much older than Sketch, for she was only fourteen and Dash was eighteen. He wore a white hoodie, nice black dress pants, and black and red shoes. He was hugging himself and giggling. Sketch could see that his hands were almost pure white, like a bleached white. His laugh was super annoying, and Sketch had had just had just about enough of it. She pulled out her knife and silently flipped it open. Then she unzipped her mouth with barely any sound, but the man was laughing to himself too loud to notice. And with that, Sketch let go of the ceiling and dropped onto him, hissing. He looked. He looked up, but too late. He was knocked over easily and crashed against the bookshelf. He knocked. He looked up at Sketch, who stood over him. Her knife was, her knife stained with his blood and was dripping onto the floor. She had managed to cut his shoulder nicely. Sketch gave a faint gasp of surprise at the side of his face. Side of his face. No eyelids. Pale pale skin, and a smile carved onto his face, and and the blood on his hoodie. <laughs> What's wrong, Curly? Too beautiful to finish? He chuckled. This insulted sketch. Fuck no, she yelled, revealing her sharp teeth and raising her knife. She began to swing the knife down, but was sent flying back when she was kicked in her stomach. Ugh! I see that you have a nice smile, too, sweetheart, he said as he got up and dusted himself off. But only I can pull it off, he began to charge, raising his, raising up his knife. But Sketch quickly dodged and stabbed him in the gash on his shoulder. He hissed in pain and tried for another attack, this time cutting her arm a tiny bit, but enough for blood to drizzle out. One cut infuriated Sketch, and she leaped over the boy onto the wall and to the ceiling. She smiled evilly at the shocked boy as he only gawked at her. 
She laughed at his reaction. She always laughs at this. She brought her hand to her mouth and whistled extremely loud, causing him to snap out of his trance and look around, only to see Sol and Ender charge. <laughs> you think that's going to stop me? That's not going to bring me down, you stupid girl, he cackled. Sketch just smirked and raised her voice. Sol, now! The dog understood and began to smile horribly as he began to grow in size until he was about the size of a horse. He, The pale boy seemed to have gone even more pale, if that was even possible, that is. Smile, the strange boy called over his shoulder. Sketch looked over to where he called and saw a large red husky dash over. His dog jumped at Sol but was shoved off easily. But for extra measures... Soul grew to the size of an elephant, if not bigger, animal's point of view. Soul was irritated at this other dog that had just grappled himself on onto his shoulder. He shook him off and growled, growing larger than, the, and an, el than an elephant. The hell is wrong with you, he growled at the smiling dog. Nothing. It's just that you're on my master, he snarled. Suddenly, en Ender wrapped himself around the dog's neck and began to squeeze. What? S stop! He barked, but Ender refused to let go. Fuck off, mutt, he hissed into the dog's ear. The pale boy gasped and ran over to his dog, but was pushed down and kept down by Sol, who had smirked and st stared at the boy who struggled under him. Sketch dropped onto his blonde strip of fur and slid down his back, smiling, obviously pleased with her pets. L let me go, you fucking cat! Ah! The smiling dog winced as his body began to tremble as, en as Ender began to squeeze tighter. J Jeff, help me! He gasped, collapsing onto the ground. Smile! No! The boy shrieked. The fuck is going on down there? J Dash ran downstairs, worried. Nothing much, just an intruder, Sketch calmly said. An intruder? No one ever! Holy shit! She yelped as she noticed the struggling boy where Soul's massive paw had, and under Soul's massive paw and his red dog squirming for air. What the... Who the hell are you? Dash asked as, as asked the pale boy on the floor. Silence. Tell me. Let Smile go, he growled. <sighs> Fine. Ender released the mutt. He, he hesitantly obeyed Sketch. The dog passed out. I'll introduce you if you tell us who you are, Dash kneeled by the boy. My name is Jeff, Jeff the Killer, he looked over towards his dog, lying motionless on the floor. And that smile dog. Name suits them, grumbled Sketch. My name's Sketch, that's Soul Eater, and that's Ender, she pointed to her pets. My name's Dash, and we have two others, but they're upstairs waiting for me to call them down. Dash explained as she lifted her head. Rosie, Sketch! Safe now. Rosie and Stitchy? Yeah. Rosie? Rosie, Stitchy, it's safe now. Rosie and Stitchy? Jeff asked. Yeah, got a problem with that? Sketch threatened him with the, her knife. Sketch's ear twitched when she heard the shuffling of small feet and some whimpering. Sketch and Jeff turned to see Rosie holding Stitchy in her short arms. Her lower lip was quivering, and lots of blood pouring from her sockets, meaning that she was crying. Small whimpers escaped from her mouth as she stood, at, st stared at the boy. She made a dash at Sketch, and and she and Stitchy hugged her. Sketch, he scares me," whimpered Rosie. "No, not really me," St Stitchy said bravely, approaching Jeff. Boo, he simply said to the stuffed kitty. Ah, Jeff, 
Dash, you scared me! He cried as he ran over to Dash, who was who hugged him comfortingly and kissed his small forehead. Oh, looks like you scared the poor little boy with your ugly face, Sketch mocked the boy. What? He shrieked and began to struggle again, but Soul kept him down good. Shut up, Sketch growled. Shut up, Sketch, Dash growled. No need to no need to be rude to our guest. Our what? Sketch Sketch stared at Dash in disbelief. No way, we should just kill him now. No, we don't want a killer to be one of our enemies. Let alone to have the whole freaking town and the police after us, she reasoned. She has a point, sweetheart, Jeff points out. Fine, but that thing stays away from me and my pets. Sketch stormed off her room. Her appetite was ruined for the day. Time skip. Dash woke up rather early that night as she as the, so the sun was still up. She got up, got dressed, brushed her teeth and hair. She then went to check up on the two children sound asleep. Then to Sketch's then Sketch's room, cursing in her sleep. And last but not least, Jeff and Smiles sound asleep with rather loud snoring. She went to put on she put on a blue hoodie, black skinny jeans and her let her hair loose to hang over her face. She then went to outside to find gro- the grocery store to make their breakfast. After buying the food she needed, she spotted two young boys sitting in the park. They took notice of her and began to approach her. She saw that one of the boys had a mask with feminine features, black lips, eyes, and eyebrows. He had neat brown hair and a hoodless jacket, hoodless yellow jacket with skinny jeans. The other also had a mask, but was black with red eyes and a frown. He too was wearing a yellow jacket, but this time with a hood over his head. He had black gloves over his hands as well. Dash kept on walking, trying to rid of the two, but despite her efforts, they tackled her down, covered her mouth so she wouldn't scream, and held her arms down so then no and held her arms down. Then the one in the white mask spoke, Where's Jeff? be continued okay that was chapter one i really do hope you enjoyed i worked pretty hard on that so thunderfox is out for now